Nothing in life is free. Everything has a cost. Even if it's sold to you as being free, somebody is paying. It's not always a financial cost, though. Sometimes it's things that are much more impactful than finances. After a few weeks of looking at insurance from all kinds of different angles and thinking about what it means to have our care dictated by these corporations, we now need to take a little bit of a pivot and to start thinking about the actual cost to you, no matter which way you choose. We're going to talk about that today. Let's dive in. Are you a Christian woman yearning for a beautiful, joyful pregnancy and birth with a focus on God, not medical tests? Are you worried the birth you want isn't possible and you're tired of being treated like an accident waiting to happen? Hey mama, I'm Lori, host of Your Birth, God's Way. I'm a certified nurse midwife now, but I wasn't always. After working for nearly 20 years in the broken maternity system, I too was in your shoes wondering how I could have the birth I wanted and that I felt God meant for me to have. I found a secret that has actually been known since the beginning of time. God's way is the best way. Spoiler alert, God made us and our babies and he knows us best. He designed us perfectly for pregnancy, birth, and nourishing our babies after birth if we work with his design and not against it. In this podcast, you'll learn how to be healthy and have joy during this time of life that will be over before you know it. So if you're ready to reclaim your birth and your babies for his glory, go turn on a few episodes of Bluey for that little one on your hip so you can put the focus back on you for a few minutes with me. Y'all know how much I love your reviews, and I love each and every one of you who takes the time to encourage me and leave me a review. Today's review I'm going to read is from back on January 29th. The screen name is, it's Pinteresting. (laughs) It's a cute name, but I didn't get an actual physical name. So whoever you are, thank you. I don't know your name though. So this person says, I just discovered this podcast two days ago. So that was back on January 27th. And I, excuse me, I have almost listened to each one. I don't believe in coincidences and I'm so thankful I saw it recommended somewhere. This is exactly what God knew I needed to hear days away from our fifth child's arrival and our first free birth. Even though we've had four successful home births, I'm still learning and gleaning so much wisdom. I love how I'm reminded to keep my eyes, faith, and trust in our only true maker. This podcast is helping me take e- to take every thought captive and remain steadfast through prayer, patience, and perseverance in the last days of this pregnancy. Forever grateful. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. And whoever you are, your baby is probably here by now. And I would love to hear your birth story. I don't have a name to know who to go look for. So maybe shoot me an email over at lori at yourbirthgodsway.com. I would love to hear your story and love to hear how it goes or how it went. Because, I mean, that was two weeks ago and you were already waiting then. Good chance baby's here by now. And I would love to hear your story. And I just appreciate everyone, again, who has taken the time to leave me a review. It encourages me so much, and it helps me find other moms just like you who need this message, who need these words of encouragement to help you also, or help them also keep their eyes on God. You've heard that home is where the heart is, and that's true. Home is also where the family is, though. Home is what's familiar. Home is where your normal bacterial environment is. God puts a lot of emphasis on family and home in the Bible as being the central point of our existence. In Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 and 4, we read, By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now, Is that just talking about piling up money? No, there are so many riches in the love and the warmth and the peace that we find in our home environment. On down, well, not on down, earlier in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter six, we read in in verses six through nine, these words, which I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, 
and they shall be as frontals on your head, on your forehead. These are all concepts that we are able to teach freely in our own homes, whereas out in the world, we can't always do that. We don't have that kind of control. But in our homes, we can control our environment and we can teach to our children the things that they need to know. Another great, great passage where we learn more about the things that you should and can do in your home is choose who you're going to follow and how you're going to live. In Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a beauty that in your house, in your home, you and your family can decide who you're going to serve and how you're going to live. In stories of childbirth in the Bible, we don't read of moms leaving to go to facilities to give birth because there were none, right? There wasn't even an option. In Exodus chapter 1, we also read about how midwives in Exodus in that time were known for doing the right thing for the baby and for the mother in the face of governmental pressure for them to do wrong. Almost sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Let's read in Exodus chapter 1. Let's start in verse 15. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other was named Pua. And he said, When you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives fear God, feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but let the boys live. Now skip down to verse 20. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. And so it was, because the midwives feared God, that he provided households for them. So we see a picture of midwives attending women in their homes, in their home environment, and pushing back against this governmental push to kill all the boy babies. They were strong. They were doing the right thing. And God blessed them. And he blessed them in the environments in which they were. We read of women calling midwives to them, both in the Bible and just in historical events. Or maybe if there weren't midwives, they may call to women who had, a, you know, a lot of babies, maybe 10, 12 babies who had been around birth, had seen birth, respected birth. That's who they would call into their environment. They would send someone to go get them and they would, the midwife would then come to the woman who was in labor. We dug into this a little bit more in episode 36 about where, where did God intend for women to give birth? So if you haven't heard that one, you can go back and listen to that one to kind of get some some extra information to fill in some gaps, but just realize that our world affords a lot of technology and many assume that that technology, all those new things, those new bells and whistles are better just because they're new. But we know by now that that's not actually true. When we turn to the new, especially when it's out of fear, we leave behind things that were really best kept. So let's talk about what is this price that we pay based on the choices that we make with our births. So you might have heard this back in school. There's a phrase called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is what you give up by choosing one thing or another. In business, it's the potential benefits, the potential income maybe, the um, for for both the business, for investors, for customers, 
It's all the things that you give up when you choose one alternative over another. So you get some benefits from one side, but then you lose benefits from the other side based on which side you choose, no matter which way that you go. You have to weigh which side has a higher cost, a higher, in this case, opportunity cost. In birth, it's the experience that you will miss out on in one location or situation when you choose another. Okay, so let's think about this. What might you be giving up? If you choose to birth at home, what are you going to miss at the hospital? Well, you're going to miss the experience of not having to leave your home and be in a car during labor. I left home during labor one time and it was to go to a birth center. Still was at a hospital, but it was an hour away. And let me tell you, I could have passed on that experience of contracting every two or three minutes for an hour in a car. It's not fun. And you miss out on that when you decide to stay home. You'll miss having strangers in your room and having machines beeping at you. You'll miss having other people making decisions for you. And you'll miss out on the cascade of interventions. So obviously, those are all things that we could probably do without anyway, right? But you also give up the thought that the presumed safety that comes from having all these people around who know how to do stuff to save you should the awful things that you're so scared of happen. Now, we won't go into in this episode whether or not those things would have ever happened at home. I think most of you know most of those things wouldn't have happened at home. We'll deal with that in a different episode. But we'll just we'll just leave it there that, you know, while you give up these other experiences that I list, you also give up having at your fingertips lots and lots and lots of professionals with lots and lots and lots of training to deal medically with anything that might go wrong. Now, if you choose to birth in the hospital, what experience are you going to miss at home? Well, you'll miss the peace and tranquility that comes with giving birth in a familiar environment. Let's go back to the thoughts of those scriptures we read. In your own environment, you set the stage. You decide what goes and what doesn't. You can put God at the forefront of your birth, and no one's ever going to tell you that you can't because it's your home and it's your environment. And in the hospital, you don't have that control because it's not your environment. So if you birth at the hospital, you're going to give up the peace and tranquility that you could have from being in your own home. You're going to miss not having to be in a car again, like I mentioned before. You'll miss being surrounded by the familiarity and the comfort of your own surroundings. But again, by being in the hospital now, you have access to all those interventions in the very small percentage of time that you might need them. Again, most of those things actually don't even happen at home. So sometimes we can put undue weight on those things thinking, but I need these things. I need them to be easily accessible. I need to be able to access them. I need need them to be there not realizing that those things almost never happen at home. But again, I digress. That's a different episode. You'll miss getting to eat and drink as you want to and being able to be up and moving around however you like to without asking permission or having to disconnect cords or wires. You'll miss what labor is like when your hormones are allowed to flow in a natural way The way that they flow when there are no interruptions to your labor, when your body is able to do what God designed it to do without anyone messing with it. You'll miss the experience of bringing your baby into a warm, loving, dark environment without bright lights and strangers and overstimulation. Now, with those things being said and those thoughts kind of marinating in your head, I want you to think about this. I know many people who chose a hospital birth out of fear and then never had more babies. And they wish that they could get that birth back and they can't. Some baby, one of your babies is going to be the last baby you have. And you rarely know which one it is at that time. It's usually after the fact that you figure that out. So let's think about this some more. Are you going to miss the money down the road? The money that it costs to have that home experience and your familiarity and your comfort where you set the rules and it's on your terms. 
Are you going to miss the money down the road that it's going to cost you to have that type of a birth if your insurance doesn't cover it? Our last couple of weeks, we talked about the cost of those births and how insurance or how having insurance has played into the affordability of maternity care. And really, it's caused a lot of the problems, if we're being honest. But there is no doubt that it is a strain for many people to be able to afford home birth when their insurance doesn't pay. It can seem to, you know, just make sense to choose to take the path that is covered by your insurance. But I want to talk to you about that money, that money that you're worried about spending that maybe you feel like that you don't have. Let's talk about that. Let's say you really buckle down and you really, really sacrifice. You save the money. You pay for the birth of your dreams. Are you going to miss that money a few years down the road? Think back in your past to something you may have saved for, or maybe even splurged on in past years. Have you thought about that money again once it was gone? Maybe after that first day or two. (laughs) Have you thought about that money again? Most likely, no. It's just gone. So your money is going to go somewhere. But where are you going to choose to spend it? I know that some people truly live paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes it's because of their own choices. Sometimes it's not. But if we're being honest, most people in America have some discretionary money to spend. So will that money go to the movies? in the vacations, in the eating out in restaurants? Or will it go toward an experience that you will never forget that might just change your health and your child's entire health for their future and for yours? That money is going to go somewhere. And in the future, you won't care about the money. But you'll have the memories that those dollars made possible that are priceless. Okay, so let's pivot again. Are you going to miss your health down the road? What do I mean by that? Well, the other side of the coin, are you going to miss the money? We dealt with that. But the other side of that is the trade-off, the health. You know, some think that being in a hospital is going to give them a better chance at coming out healthy on the back end. And that's just simply not true, sadly. In fact, a lot of the things that moms deal with for years and years and years, maybe the rest of their lives, are a result of the things that were done in the hospital that are not done at home. All that glitters, as we've said before, everything that glitters, all the new and the shiny and the better, is not necessarily the better. All right, so we are not studying. Let's think about this. We are not studying. Research is not being done on the long-term effects of all that's being done to moms in labor. We aren't talking about the damage that's done to moms, let's say, their spinal cords by epidurals, the nerve damage that is lasting. We aren't talking about the damage to some moms' pelvic floors that comes from directed pushing for entirely too long in positions that are just not optimal with mom on her back. We aren't talking about the damage to moms and babies' gut health because they're getting antibiotics that were likely not even needed. What about the moms who have ruptured uteruses now? Not because they labored with a previous C-section. No, what about the moms who had no risk factors? They came in completely normal with a completely normal pregnancy and they were talked into an induction. Other than the induction medications they were given without proper informed consent, they had no risk. And yet those medications caused contractions that were too strong, too many, too close together, and their perfectly formally healthy uterus busted open. And now their babies are disabled for life. When if they'd been allowed to labor, when labor came naturally, things would have gone 100% differently. What about that mom? What about those moms? See, these things don't happen at home because when you allow a woman's body to labor the way God intended and you basically just leave her alone and allow God to do his work in her, unnecessary interventions won't lead to future health problems. 
And I feel like I always have to make this disclaimer or somebody will come with, the, oh, but what if this had happened? If I hadn't had X happen while I was in the hospital, I would have died. Or if, if such and such wasn't there, then this would have happened. What about that? Well, yes, there's a place for interventions. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good things that these interventions can do when properly applied. The word that was key in what I said before was unnecessary. Because see, when you apply these things unnecessarily to all women, some of those women are going to have the side effects that those interventions bring. And when they were applied unnecessarily, then those side effects, which may lead to lifelong impact, were preventable because they were unnecessary to start with. I'm not talking about when you were in true danger and you need the interventions to save you or your baby. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about to the normal mom who came in and had nothing going on and these things were applied to her anyway and now she's got lifelong issues because of it. You know, if you're the mom who pees on herself for the rest of her life when she laughs or coughs because she had to push in a bed with an epidural that she didn't really even want because of that undue force that was put on her pelvic floor when she was pushing and having to push so, so, so hard because she couldn't feel what she was doing and that causes incontinence, you're going to miss the health that those interventions cost you. If you're the one who can't have a home birth now with your next baby, because with this one, this past baby, you decided you would go to the hospital just to be safe, but then you're pushed into an unnecessary C-section because you just wouldn't dilate or your baby just won't come out this way. Because you were induced, because of an arbitrary date on a calendar, before your baby was in the right position, but now you live in an area where no one is legally allowed to attend your birth at home because you now got a scar on your uterus. You're going to miss the health that those interventions cost you. Or what about in that same situation if your baby wasn't ready to be born yet? You end up with a C-section because you were induced before your baby was ready and you really hadn't gone into labor yet because your baby wasn't ready. That hormonal cocktail that happens that we don't fully understand hadn't happened yet because your baby wasn't ready yet and it hadn't sent that signal to your body. So now this baby is being cut out by C-section after this induction that failed and now the baby ends up needing to be in the NICU for who knows how long because his lungs were not ready which is, again, why you weren't in labor yet. And you never really get the chance to get breastfeeding established because you could never latch him on. You're going to miss the mental health that those interventions cost you. And your baby is going to miss the physical health that it costs him because he's not getting to have that bonding with you or that nutrition from you. You think I'm being hyperbolic? Am I being over the top? Am I being, am I exaggerating? I think any of you who have been in this world for any length of time know that I'm not. There is a mom listening right now who has had every single one of these situations happen to her. And she wishes that she hadn't. She wishes she'd just listened to her gut and gotten over her fear, but it's too late for her now. And if you're not her, it might not be too late for you. And now one other thing to think about. We've talked about the financial costs. If you choose the home birth on the front end, we've talked about the possible health costs if you don't. But I also want you to think about the possible financial cost and all the little incidentals and the care that it's going to cost if those health things happen to you. Because at the end of the day, if some of these things do happen to you, you're going to more than pay everything you would have paid for the home birth to start with. Example, your baby ends up in the NICU and you never fully get that breastfeeding relationship established. You can't pump enough because you're just not being stimulated properly. And so you end up having a formula feed. Do the math on that formula. It's going to cost as much or more than that home birth ever would have. Let's say you're the mom who can't control her urine anymore because of that abnormal force that was put on your pelvic floor. 
or maybe because of that same abnormal force, you end up having to have a pessary or different work done down there later to hold your uterus up. Those things cost money too. Now, it may not be on the front end. You may not ever connect the two, but I want you to realize that just because you're not paying financially now does not mean that you're not going to be paying financially at some point in the future for the health problems that you may incur because of your birth choices now. There are moms who are dealing with all of these things right now. And I promise you, if they had a podcast platform they could hop on and talk to you, they'd be saying the same thing. They would want you to think really hard before you make these decisions. And so I want to leave you with that thought. It is not too late for you if these things haven't happened to you yet. And even if some of them have, it may not be too late for you. So you're either going to pay now with money or you may be paying later with your health. Home birth is worth the investment. Now, that being said, of course, there are people, there are certain situations that are not appropriate for home. And we're going to talk about those next week. We're going to look into some of the situations, some of the very few situations in which you are safer to be at a hospital. So that way you can fully understand and you can make a great decision for what's best for you and for your baby and for your family. But for today, I just want to leave you with the thought that there is a cost either way. Even if you choose the route of what's covered by your insurance, you may be paying later in ways that are much more difficult than just paying money on the front end. Let that marinate. Let me know what you think about it. If you're not in our Facebook yet, a group yet, hop over there. Let me know what you think. I just really want to encourage as many of you as possible to be brave enough to break from the fear, to put your faith back in God, the one who made you, the one who made your baby, and trust him to bring your, bring your baby in his time, in his perfect way, in the way that he designed, that he designed for you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, share it with a friend, and I'll see you right back here next week. Real quick, if today's episode blessed you in any way, would you head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a quick five-star written review? It'll take you less than a minute, but it's the best thank you you can give me, and it will help my show to reach more mamas just like you so we can all find God's best for our families. I'll see you right back here in a few days.